What's going on guys, welcome back to another video and welcome to week four of the subscriber store reviews. So in this video, we're gonna be taking a look at two tech stores. These are two kind of like techie slash gadget type stores, which in my opinion is probably one of the hardest niches to be successful in. We've got two completely different examples of stores. So we have this one here, which is called Tech Trends HQ, which has gone for this kind of like really kind of futuristic and techie and like neon type vibe. And then we also have this one here, which is called alexelectronics.com, which has gone for a very kind of default and standard template. The reason I think the kind of techie and gadget niche is one of the most difficult to kind of break through in is because it's been done so many times before that unless you, it comes back to what I was saying last week, unless your store has like a specific identity and you give people a reason to buy from you. So when a customer buys a product from you, there will be a reason inside them of why they've chosen to buy that product from you. And unless you know crystal clear exactly why that is, then in my opinion, you're really gonna struggle to kind of make it a success. People nowadays, certainly the last few years, people have become a lot more savvy when it comes to Shopify dropshipping stores. Like back when I first started, it wasn't the dropshipping was new, it was just that the market wasn't as saturated as it is today. People have seen generic kind of like gadget e electronic type stores like this. So it's really important that if you wanna be successful in this business, that you give people exactly what that why reason is and you do things differently to everybody else. Design your store or pick a product that makes you stand out from the competition so that people will remember you. So the first thing that stands out to me about this store is that these are all the generic stock images taken from AliExpress or whoever the supplier may be. These will be imagery that consumers will be used to seeing again, which doesn't really help with that idea of standing out from the competition. What it also does is it devalues your brand as well. It makes you come across as like a cheap electronic store, which isn't the easiest path to walk in my opinion. If you took all of these images and took away the background so it's just a solid white background and put a nice shadow on the image so everything looks uniform and everything looks super professional and in keeping with each other then straight away that would make your brand come across as a lot more established and professional and therefore you'll be able to charge a premium price and that gives that consumer a why as well you have a store that looks more professional you look more trustworthy and because everything is uniform there's a consistent brand throughout the store then your products look higher quality as well my initial thoughts with all of these products as well is that none of them have like a real unique unique selling point. This one potentially here, it's been done, it's been around for a few years now, but we are coming into the summer months. It potentially is a product that more and more people will be looking to buy. However, given that yes, it is a gadget and it's in the tech, it's more of kind of like a fashion type, makeup type, getting ready type feminine store rather than buying it from like a generic um, electronics one. So this is the homepage. I'm going to let that slide because to be honest, the homepage isn't mega important. What is super, super important is the actual product page itself, because this is going to be the initial meeting with any potential consumer. You should be directing your traffic from whatever platform it is direct to your product page. So we'll, we'll go to view all actually and see what else um, we have on here. Okay, so I'm going to go for the three in one magnetic folding wireless charger. First of all, the price is a bit off to me, 27 pounds and six pence. You won't typically see that when you go into like one of your local shops. It's usually rounded to nine nine or nine five. So that'll be something as well that I'd get changed. It's just one of those kind of housekeeping tasks that needs to be done. So three in one magnetic folding wireless charger. It's like a name of a product that you'd see on eBay. Whereas we're not trying to compete with those guys. We're trying to create a brand that people see value in and aren't coming to us because we're the cheapest they're coming to us because they want to buy from us tax included and shipping calculated at checkout i'm assuming this guy is selling to the us given that it's showing in great british pounds if that is the case remove the gbp no need to have that on there and remove the tax included as well you only have to go on to any other kind of like household e-commerce website and there's never ever a mention of taxes because it's just it's built into the price unless you're selling business to business and there's no need to have this on your website and then shipping calculated at checkout which is fine however to me that has a negative connotation it implies there's an extra cost on top of this product so it might seem like a niggly point but anything that's going to potentially put off your customer at this point is bad you should have it at the very end because at least then there's more commitment having somebody coming onto your store is not as committed to making a purchase 
this as somebody who is two steps into the checkout process. And if you then decide to add a shipping fee on at that point, they might just think, you know what, sod it, I've come this far, I'll just pay it and order it. Moving down into the imagery and the description then, again, it kind of like an eBay type listing. Um, the generic stock images imported from his supplier and then just a quite a wordy type description. There's no kind of like separation or highlights of the key benefits what this product can do for someone. Another mistake I see a lot of people making is they talk about the features of the product. So featuring 15 watt fast wireless charger, this charger is up to 50% faster than standard, so on and so forth. What you need to be focusing on is the benefits of what that feature is, the reason why that feature is so important. If we have a look at these different tabs, so nothing on materials, nothing on shipping and returns, nothing on dimensions, nothing on care instructions as well. So to me, this looks like a half finished store to me, and there's definitely a lot that needs doing before any consideration goes into running paid ads. This is also backed up by the fact that they haven't changed these default sections here. So free shipping, pair text with image focus. Um, there needs to be a lot of work done to this store before, um, like I mentioned, any kind of direction to paid ads. So our story, Alex's electronics was started by a single person who cared about different electronics. To me, this looks quite bland um, for an hour story page. This is your chance to tell people who you are and to potentially build rapport with any potential visitor and give them a reason, give them that why to buy it from you. Have a picture of yourself, have a picture of your family like the store I reviewed on Monday. Tell people why you created this business and talk about how passionate you are about the products and how you test them all and you use them all yourself before you decide to sell them. Tell them how you're fed up potentially with really low quality, poor, cheap electronics and you're only sell things that you've tried and tested yourself and you offer a rock solid guarantee or something like that. This is your chance to build rapport with your potential customers and give them that why. Here's the contact us page then. So they actually have some contact times, which is good. I recommend everybody have this on your store. And this needs to be coupled though with, in my opinion, with a matching email address. So hello at info at support at alexelectronics.com. It needs to be matched with a telephone number and it needs to be matched with a physical address as well. People want to know these days that they are buying from a real business and they're not gonna be ripped off or scammed. Something else I haven't seen on the store yet is shipping information. So I don't think I've ever bought a product unless I had some kind of expectation of when to, to expect it. Um, and I haven't found it on any of these product pages. So I'm just gonna have a look around. We've seen a shipping policy here so processing, processing, I should say, will take one to two days. Shipping can vary due to location of customer. So does that mean another one to two days for delivery? Does it mean one to two weeks? Does it mean one to two months? It's not very specific. And all it's going to do is arise further questions from the potential consumer. The mission and the job of your Shopify store is to answer any potential questions that your customers have so that they have zero reasons not to buy from you. So they need to know what the price of the product is, exactly what the functions and features of the product is, what size it is, if that's relevant to your product, whether how they can return it, if they wanna return it, what's the guarantee, when can they expect it? They need to know all of these things. And if any of those questions go unanswered, it will 100% harm your conversion rate. A quick summary of this store then, it needs a bit of TLC to be honest. Um, it looks like they've had a quantity rather than quality approach. Um, I would go through all of these products and probably disable every single one of them in fact, um, hide them from your store and then only add them back to your store once you've given them the time and attention and the care they need to build out a proper product page. So if I was this person, I would continue my education on YouTube, mainly on product page design and layout and the psychology of why people buy and if it's within your budget, then to invest in a course that has a great track record of being able to produce results. Moving on to store number two, as you can see, we're taking a look at this one in the mobile format. The reason being is because on a desktop format, then it's all a bit dodgy. So I'm assuming it's one of those themes that's been designed specifically to accommodate for mobile users, which, is okay, it is okay. I would say 98% of my purchases do come from a mobile device, so it's probably not gonna be an issue if yours isn't optimized from desktop, but I'm very much of the impression that there's plenty of themes out there which is optimized for both, so why not go for one of those? Straight away, we can see some of the very same products that we saw in the previous store. It's the very same type of imagery, so the reason I wanted to include both of these in the same video, I'm not gonna spend as much time on this one, is because pretty much all of the same points apply. It's coming across as one of those cheap techie type stores where all of these products are probably available on eBay for half the price. And whilst that 
doesn't always destroy a business and it's not always the be all and end all because you can compete with those guys but you're not going to compete with them if your store doesn't give people that why people go to ebay to get the cheapest price people go to amazon for the cheapest price and because they have good delivery so trying to take on those billion dollar corporations at their very own game is not going to end very well we need to give people another reason why and you might be thinking well what other reasons are there there is actually quite a few so what what I'm going to plan, in fact, rather than go through them now and make this video 20, 30 minutes long, I will plan it for next week. In fact, I've got next week's videos already planned out. So the week after, I will do a video on how to get people to buy from us versus eBay and Amazon. If we have a look at these guys' contact us page, it's just a contact form. There's no, hello, welcome to our store. Um, our office is at such and such a location. Our opening hours are blah, blah, blah. This is our email address. This is our telephone number. Without sounding harsh, this looks like a scam store to me because if I don't receive my product, then how do I get hold of someone? How do I know that anybody's even going to reply? Let's take a look at the FAQ. So the font is quite difficult to read. Um, what forms of payments? Nowadays, this one isn't really relevant. All the kind of big name brands would expect, or most people would expect to have, like there's a traditional, there's common payment methods that everybody should accept. If I have to process and ship orders as quickly as possible, processing times may vary depending on the specific product and order volume. Typically orders are processed and shipped within 10 to 15 days, then you'll receive a shipping confirmation. So how, again, how much longer after that, if it can take 15 days to be processed and shipped, how long after that should I expect delivery? Let's take a look at a product page then. Um, as we can see, it's again, just kind of like a start image taken from what looks like aliexpress 20 minutes timer function count stats automatically when you turn it on so these images are quite nice but because they're not branded and they're not matching the store they look out of place in my opinion so cupping massager vacuum suction pumps again in its own right it's probably a really good product but so i would imagine because it has that health type benefit and that fitness related connection somebody would want to buy this from a store that's probably a one product store that has lots and lots of information about the benefits and shows people using it and kind of demonstrates and illustrates the technology and the science behind it. In fact, let's not write it off too soon. Let's see if it does have that sort of thing. So again, tax included, I'd remove this. This store actually has some reviews. I forgot to mention that in the previous store, that previous store had zero reviews. The variants, so red, six level, six levels heating, blue, so it's not instantly clear what these variants are, plus 12 levels heating. So I'm assuming the six and the 12 refer to heating and intensity. So it's not it's not massively clear. Um, I'm probably nitpicking a little bit there, but I would just try and make it a bit more clearer or actually reduce those variants down to just one and two different versions. In fact, what I'd do in this case is I'd have a type where you can select six levels of heating and intensity or 12 levels of heating and intensity and then another variant for color. So you can just use black, red, um, rather than try and combine all three different options of variants into one, if that makes sense. As we move down into the product description, then, so we've got some reviews, works great, just a fun up with the word cool to me that looks like a spam review it doesn't look like a real review um, to be honest this is probably more off-putting than on-putting for a consumer because they don't look real wow such a cool gadget great for after gym because these don't look like real reviews then it's going to ring alarm bells for any potential consumers so whether they've wrote these themselves or imported them from aliexpress again when it comes to the actual reviews on your store make sure it's a case of quality over quantity as for the product description there's too much text there in my opinion this needs to be digested and then illustrated with icons and imagery and gifs to demonstrate exactly how the product works asking somebody to read through that which isn't the most visually pleasing text to read with a black background is asking a lot from a potential consumer there's definitely easier more effective ways um, of getting the information and the benefits across of this product to your consumer so with that being said to wrap this particular site up um, again i think they've had the similar approach to the previous store of quantity rather than quality if this was my store i would go back to the drawing board with the products and i would focus one at a time and rather than try and rush and get as many products on your store as possible and try and make money as quickly as possible just focus on one product at a time and put all your time and effort into that again learn about how to build proper proper product pages learn about the psychology learn about store design 
then go back to running ads, maybe try that for a week. And if it doesn't work out, switch them off and come back to the drawing board again, rather than try and rush things and skip corners and put out a half finished article. Um, in my opinion, you'll be better, you'll be much better off just spending the time from day one to give it the care and attention that your stores um, needs. And so with that being said, guys, I'm going to wrap the video up. I hope you guys are stuck with me. I hope you've enjoyed it. If you want to get your store reviewed, head over to Instagram now. Follow me it is at Jack Kitchen or UK. Send me your store link. I'll add it to the list and I'm going through them top to bottom. So if you want to get your store reviewed sooner rather than later, make sure you do that now. Thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video on Friday.